Hi everyone, my name is Shreya Bosha and I am a student in IV Professional School. Today I am going to discuss a project on financial analysis in Python. So let us get started. So the project that I am going to discuss focuses largely on exploratory data analysis which is an important part of machine learning which helps us analyze and investigate data sets and summarize their main characteristics by employing data visualization methods. It helps us determine how to best manipulate data sources to get the answers we need thus enabling us to discover hidden patterns, spot anomalies, test a hypothesis and understand the relationship between the variables. So the aim of the project here will be to understand the use of Pandas data reader for reading stock info from the internet and secondly visual exploratory data analysis in Python using Matplotlib, Pandas, Plotly, Cufflinks and Seaborn libraries. So what the data set is about? So using Pandas data reader, we will get stock information for the following six banks that is Bank of America, City Group, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan Chase, Morgan Stanley and Wells Fargo. We will get the open, high, low, close, volume and adjusted close price for each of these six bank stocks and then concatenate them into a single data frame for further analysis. Now let us jump into the Jupyter notebook. So here we are going to focus on bank stocks and see how they progressed throughout the financial crisis in 2008 all the way to early 2016. So first we need to start with the proper imports. We need to install Pandas data reader for this to work. I have already installed Pandas data reader here. So Pandas data reader will allow us to read stock information from the internet. Now here this code will suppress some non-harmful warnings which we can get while executing the codes. Here we are doing some necessary imports that is pandas, numpy, datetime, matplotlib, seaborn and pandas data reader. So pandas data reader will allow us to get the stock information for the following six banks and we need to google the names of the bank stickers before we use them here as an argument of the data reader. So first we need to set the start and the end date. My start date is 1st Jan 2006 and the end date is 1st Jan 2016. Next, here using Pandas data reader, we will import data for each bank. The first argument being the bank ticker like we have BAC for Bank of America, C for Citigroup, GS for Goldman Sachs and so on. Next we have the source that is Yahoo Finance. And the third and fourth argument will be the start and the end date. Now if we check the output of BAC, we will see that we have date as an index and high, low, open, close, volume and adjusted close as our columns in this data frame. And we will get the similar kind of data frame for all of these six bank stocks. Next. Here we will create a list of tickers for the six banks we have already discussed about and then we are going to concatenate them into a single data frame using pd.concat. Access is equal to 1 since we will be concatenating them along the columns and keys will be equal to tickers. So now if we check the head of bank stocks we get this as an output. My bank tickers being the outer column and this high, low, open, close volume will be my inner column. Now the data frames created above have been concatenating, concatenated which makes sense since all of them have same indexes, columns, start and end date. Now here we will set the column names as bank ticker and stock info. Here we did not have any column names here and also round them up to two decimal places. So our final output looks like this. The bank ticker's name being the outer column, stock info being the inner column and we have multi-level indexing here. Now it might sometimes happen that Pandas data reader might not be able 
to read information for certain bank stocks and might give error. In that case, we have this pickle file called all banks which have the data for all the six banks we will discuss about and we can import it and use accordingly. So I have already imported the file and if I show you the output, it looks like this. Similar to the one we have created above. Now let us explore the data a bit. Our first question is to find the max flows price for each bank stocks throughout the time period. So in order to grab the max flows price for each bank, we have to use dot access which is the cross section function which allow us to grab information from multi-level indexing. Like I showed you here, we have multi-level indexing here. So we can grab this close price for all of the six bank stocks. Access is equal to one since my close is the column and level is stock info since close is the part of the stock info column. So if we run this, we get this data frame as an output and if we do dot max of this output, we get the max closing price for each of the six bank stocks. Next, we will create an empty data frame called returns which will contain the returns for each bank stock. So returns are typically defined by price of the day PT divided by price of the previous day PT minus 1 whole minus 1. So here we have created the empty returns data frame. Here we have the tickers again. We have we are checking the names of the tickers which we have already declared above. And here the for loop goes for each bank ticker uh, as declared here. And calculates the return using a percentage change function. So PCT change is my percentage change function. So if I show you this close price data frame here. So basically PCT change is calculating the percentage change for each day. So if we check the output of returns data frame, we get this is an output. We have NAND values in the first row since we will not have any returns in the first day. Next, we will create a pair plot using Seaborn of the returns data frame. We will be doing pair plot from second row that is index 1 since the first row has NAND values as I have shown you here. And I am setting the diagonal kind as histograms else we will get KDE plots and I am setting the bins to 10. So if I run this, I get this beautifully looking pair plot as an output. So the pair plot of return seems good for all the stocks except for city group. The city return as we can see here and also here since it had a huge stock crash in 2008. So if we check the Wikipedia page of city group, we will see that by November 2008, city group was insolvent despite its receipt of rupees, sorry, dollar 25 billion. So that's the reason for the weird return of city group. Now we will find the best and worst single day returns for each bank stock. Since date is my index of the returns data frame as we can see here we will use IDX mean and IDX max to grab the data of lowest and highest return. So we will use IDX mean to grab the data of lowest return and we will use IDX max to grab the data of highest return. Now in this output of day of lowest return we can see that Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, JPM, JP Morgan Chase and Wells Fargo share the same day for the worst drop. Now if we search this date on Google we will see that January 20. 2009 was the inaugural day of Barack Obama, which is the reason for the worst drop for all of these four banks. Now, if we do IDX max, we can grab the date of highest return. Now, if we check the city, the date for the city group return of highest return, we can see that city group and JP Morgan Chase had the biggest gain day in about one to three day gaps from the day of worst drop like Citigroup had 
डे ऑफ लोएस्ट रिटर्न ऑन सिक्स मे एंड हाइएस्ट रिटर्न ऑन नाइन्थ मे सिमिलरली फॉर जे पी एम द डे ऑफ हाइएस्ट रिटर्न इज ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट जैन एंड द लोएस्ट रिटर्न वॉज ट्वेंटी एथ जैन so if we take a look at the standard deviation of the return we can see that city group appears to be the riskiest and in order to find the riskiest stock for the year 2015 we will use the returns data frame and use dot loc to grab the dates from 1st jan 2015 to 31st december 2015 and then calculate the standard deviation so the standard deviation for all the banks are nearly the same except for wells fargo which is quite lower than all of them now here we will create a disk plot using seaborn of 2015 returns for morgan stanley so first i am setting the figure size and then i'll use sns dot disk plot and use the returns frame dot loc for grabbing the dates of 2015 and doing ms return to grab the column of morgan stanley return from the returns data frame bins has been set to 75 and color is set to green so if we look at the distribution of ms return for 2015 it looks normally distributed with a deviation of 0.06 from the average now if we look at the disk plot of 2008 returns for city group the code is nearly same except the date has been changed Uh, from 2015 to 2008 and we are grabbing the c return for city groups uh, the bins have been set to 75 and color is red so 2008 was quite a volatile year for city group the standard deviation is quite stretched out especially here at 0.6 so if we look at the distribution of return for a bank in a normal year like 2015 as morgan stanley it was 0. 06 and here in case of city group it is 10 times at as much as the distribution shows so next we will dive deeper into more visualizations using plotly and couplings so i am checking the bank stocks head again here we will create a line plot showing close price for each bank for the entire index of time and same plot will be created using i plot also So here we are just grabbing the close column from the bank stocks for each of these bank tickers using the cross section function and plotting them. And if we use the same code and use I plot here, we'll get this interactive plot. So here we can zoom in and look at the dips of Goldman Sachs and Citigroup during the financial crisis of two thousand eight. and if i auto scale and zoom in here we can see the stock split of city group in may 2011 so the blue line is for city group and the green is for goldman sachs next we have the rolling 30 day average against close price for bank of america stocks for the year 2008 So here, basically, I'm setting the figure size and then using date formatter to format the date as the month name and the year name, year uh, digits, and then uh, I'm simply calculating the rolling average using this formula. So this window of thirty can be uh, set to weekly or sixty day moving average also, and then plotting them with the suitable label. so this orange line shows the bank of america closing price and this blue line shows the 30 day moving average next here we will be creating a heat map of the correlation between the stock close price so here we will do sns dot heat map this is the close price column which we have already extracted over we are doing dot cor to calculate the correlation and a not has been set to true so that we can get the labels here so this plot shows the cross section of the closing prices and their correlation with annotations is equal to true we can see that bank of america city group and morgan stanley are strongly correlated to each other various jpm and wells fargo are also strongly correlated 
now here we are going to create a cluster map using seaborn to cluster the correlations together the formula is nearly same except that we are using cluster map here so the cluster map here tries to group the correlation of city group as we can see here city group uh, bank of america and morgan stanley together and then goldman sachs jpm and wells fargo together so we can create the similar heat map using iplot also which is an interactive plot and we can see the same output here like bsc uh, city group and morgan stanley are strongly correlated as indicated by this blue color and similarly wells fargo and uh, jp morgan are also strongly correlated so now here we are going to create a candlestick plot using iplot which is used for financial analysis so this candlestick plot tells us whether the stock went up or down that day we are grabbing the bank of america from bank stocks and the open high low and close price for bank of america and grabbing the dates from 1st jan 2015 to 1st jan 2016 and plotting the candlesticks so if i zoom in here and show you it means the color green uh, which means increasing and the color red means the price is decreasing now we are going to some ta plots which is technical analysis plot this technical analysis plot using cufflinks is based on simple moving average here we are going to create a simple moving average plot for morgan stanley for the year 2015 so we can see that the orange line shows the closing price and this blue lines show the simple moving average for the periods 13 21 and 55 which are common technical analysis periods and at last we have this another technical analysis plot which is the bollinger bank band plot for bank of america for the year 2015 so the code is nearly same and this uh, orange line shows us the closing price we have sma that is simple moving average in between and upper and lower band here so this technical analysis plot shows the standard deviation of stock prices as, as it moves up through the time. It also shows the upper and lower band. This is my upper and this is lower band with the simple moving averages. So finally we have reached the end of our discussion where we learned about various visualization techniques in Python and how we could identify the trends and hidden patterns through this exploratory data analysis. I hope all of you like the video and thanks all for watching.